All right, in this video, we're going to focus on the x-axis and there's some very important pieces here that will help you create any type of graph, keeping everything nice and proportional. And it all revolves around padding and shifting some things to get it to look the way you want it to look. Not a lot of math involved in this video, but I am taking this step by step because I want you to realize here, yes, this is a Bitcoin graph, but you can make any type of line graph you want. And with some of the tips I'm providing throughout this rather long series of videos, it covers some fundamental pieces in helping you really exploit the true capabilities of KOWP or your custom app. So we're going to focus on the x-axis here. In the previous videos, part one, two, three, or how many ever parts we've been through so far, we have looked at getting the time to show correctly, getting the price to show correctly. Now let's actually put this text at the bottom of our graph. There's two free components in my free components folder. I just updated them today because there was one little minor mistake with some math in it. Look for test graph for Bitcoin. That's going to be the one with Darth Vader or look for the Bitcoin graph. Both of those are in my free components folder. They're identical with the exception of the background. So inside of that component, let's go over to globals and let me show you the globals that we're going to focus on in this video. BG image, just a quick way to change the background image. BG height, adjust just the height of the image. It's not changing the height of the graph. Notice that. The graph is staying where it is. It's just that background image just getting bigger. Time size, that's going to adjust the text on our x-axis. Time padding here will allow us to move just the x-axis up and down. Yes, it will shift the image a little bit, but really the graph is staying stationary and just the time padding. Notice the graph isn't moving. Yes, the background image is moving a little bit, but hopefully that's not that big of a deal. It's all about getting that x-axis exactly where you want it. And now height, not to be confused with VG height, this is how we actually adjust the height of our graph itself. So I want you to take note here that BG height and height are two different number globals. BG height controls the background image and this height global here, this number global controls the actual height of this graph region that we have inside of here. Pad, quite possibly one of the most important globals in this tutorial and as a matter of fact, almost over this entire graph, the pad will allow us to squeeze the graph in horizontally or stretch the graph horizontally. And what I want you to notice here is that everything still stays proportional. The dots stay right above our text on the x-axis, which is great. And it's all about using these number globals correctly. So I'm going to squeeze that back in a little bit. We don't have to worry about cush in this video. No y-axis padding in this video. No y-axis size in this video. But shift dots, another very important number global in this entire component. Shift dots is positive. It's going to move it to the right. And when shift dots becomes negative, we can move it way over here to the left. And what I want you to notice is that the text on the x-axis is moving and the dots are staying centered directly above each piece of text that shows the time and the price. Now I put all of these things in here, not to overwhelm you, which I'm sure it may, but the idea here is this. You have a lot of ways to customize this to make it look the way you want. And then since we've talked about time one through time five, the T1 through T5, as well as the P1 through P5, we're going to use those globals to get this text. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how to apply the number globals to get all these things centered and spaced equally and whatnot. And as you change them, the things still stay spaced nicely. So with all that said, real quick, the BG, the background, that is our background image, the Darth Vader image you see here. Its width is the width of the screen, S-I-R width. The height is the BG height number global. And for its FX, I have that BG image set up there. And I do have a black and white filter applied to that with a little bit of dim to darken it up. That way the graph sticks out real nice and clear. So nothing too crazy there, hopefully. And now we have the transparent graph area. This is a smaller rectangle. It's still the width of the screen and I have the height set to GV height. Remember, GV height and GV BG height are two different things. This actual transparent graph area is the part where we can actually shrink and grow this graph vertically. Its color is set to a completely transparent color. That's why I'm calling it transparent graph area. It's just some container or something like that, if you will, so that I can house all of that stuff inside of there. And then I can still have this image around it. You know, here's my graph area right inside of here, but I can have this BG image outside of here to give it some uh, more border or whatever. 
So those two things are out of the way. We're not focusing on horizontal lines, lines, dots, y-axis, none of that in this video. The main thing we wanna focus on now is the time and actual price overlap group. Inside of that time and actual price overlap group, we have all five of the prices and times that we got over from Tasker. And again, in previous parts to this entire series, I did discuss how to get the time to show correctly and how to get the price to show correctly. Now, before we look into these items, let's go to the position of this entire overlap group. I showed you earlier that shift dots would either go left or right and shift dots, that number global was actually a positive or a negative number. Left padding will move the graph to the right. Right padding will move the graph to the left. So let's look at the left padding code. If that GV shift dots, if it's positive, then I want to use whatever that number is. Whatever that positive number is, I want to use it. And ultimately this is going to shift the graph to the right. That is your left padding. If GV shift dots is not greater than zero, then I don't want to apply any left padding at all. Now let's look at the right padding. If GV shift dots is less than zero, then that's gonna be a negative number. I wanna take that negative number, GV shift dots, and multiply it by negative one, and apply that right padding to the graph, which is going to shift it to the left. And to show you that shift dots one more time before we proceed, if I go to that number global, shift dots right now shift dots is positive so our graph's going to move to the right now it's still positive as i'm decreasing it but right here where gv shift dots is zero there's neither no left padding nor no right padding but now once i make gv shift dots negative it's going to shift it over to the left so a little bit of math tied into that but i think it kind of makes sense if i'm pressing right I want the graph to go right. If I press left, I want the graph to go left. So now we're heading back to that time and actual price overlap group. And again, one more thing to mention here, the anchor is the center. And now if we come to this text that says 259 and $7,514.95, that's gonna be this first one way over here on the right. So I'm gonna to go to that text item. I have a global font applied. I didn't mention that earlier, but it's just a global font. And I had that GV time size applied to that. And it's actually applied the same two globals, both the font and the size are applied to all five of these. And let's look at the text real quick. Since this is my most current time, I wanna use GV T1. We talked about that in previous parts. And then also I want to show that GV P1, that price one, the most current price. Now what you may notice here is that I have several dollar symbols. If I take away those two up front, all I'm seeing is that GVP1, which is a 7,514.95. If I apply a single dollar symbol, it's recognizing this as a function and then it's throwing this all off. But if I come here and put another one, it's going to recognize the GVP1 and then it's going to, I don't know, just show one of these and now I get that price the way that I wanna see it. So that's not too tricky, but let's talk about the position of this thing right here. Its anchor is in the center. Let's talk about the top padding first. I'm going to take away the top padding for right now. And notice it is anchored in the center. I want to apply some top padding such that I can move it down to the bottom of my graph. But then I also want to apply some of that time padding, whatever it may be. There's actually two globals we're gonna use here that I've mentioned back at the beginning. So let me go back to my calculator. Let's jump into this top padding. And I'm using GV height, which is the height of the graph, automatically that's gonna push it to the bottom of the graph because I'm applying top padding, top padding pushes it down. But then I'm gonna tack on some more, whatever GV time pad is. This little extra number global right here gives you a little bit more flexibility to move that time padding down even more past whatever GV height is. This is what allows you to drop that X axis stuff below the graph, well below the graph to give you that look that you want. And now let's talk about the left padding because technically if I take away this left padding, it's gonna put that text right here in the middle and you may not be able to see that. Let me take away the top padding as well. So with the top padding away and the left padding taken away, I want this thing to be spaced equally and I want it to be over here on the far right since it's my most current price and time. Since I have five pieces of data that I'm getting from Tasker, I want to apply left padding twice to bump this over here. I'm gonna apply a single left padding when I get to this one. I'm going to apply no left or right padding whatsoever for this one, and you're gonna see all of this in a second. And then I'm gonna apply some single right padding and double right padding. 
So you may say, well, I'll just use left padding and I'll put it here. But suppose you wanted to customize this graph, you'd have to come in here and change this number to get it to line up every single time. I don't want to do that. Hopefully you don't want to do that either. So by us using a code and some number globals, all we have to do is take that GV pad and this is how I can squeeze it or stretch it horizontally. Since I have five pieces of data, I want two pieces on the right, two pieces on the left, and I want one right smack in the center. Since this is my most current one, I want to push it all the way over to the right and I want to do two of those GV paddings. So that code is applied and this is going to allow me to pad all of these and keep these equal spaces inside of here. Now let me apply my top padding again and I have it back down there where I want. Let me back out of here and let me move to the second one. The second one here, 158, $7,525.39. That's the second one. It's the second most current. Same font, same size. Let's go over to position. It has the exact same top padding code as the first one did. As a matter of fact, all of them have this same code. And then the left padding, all I want to do is bump over one spot instead of two spots. Therefore, for left padding, I just have GV pad. The most current one that I showed you a moment ago was two paddings. This is just a single padding. Let's go to the center one now, this third one, the 1259, all that same stuff here same top padding and notice I have no left or right padding applied because I have an odd number of data points. That middle one is going to be right smack in the middle of my graph. For this fourth one here, the 12 o'clock with the $7,654.48, I'm going to go over to its position, same top padding and check this out. Now I want this to be one spot to the left, so I want to apply a single GV pad, as you can see right there, as the right padding. That's gonna move it over one unit or one padding to the left. And then last but not least, this one that has 1059, $7,622.71. If I go over to its position, for its right padding, again, top padding's the same for all of these pieces, but the right padding now is I want to move over to the left two paddings because it's the oldest one. That's gonna be the next one that gets dropped off, so to speak, as we discussed back in the arrays in part one and part two, how we were dropping the oldest piece and sliding all of our new pieces over to make way for that new price and that new time. If all of that's a little bit confusing, that's why this is broken up into so many parts because there's so much going on here. And what I wanted to focus on in this video is getting this set up correctly. And if we go back and look at all of this stuff in action, the shift dots, that's actually shifting. And the only thing I'm focusing on here is really just this part, just this overlap group that we have right here with all of these prices and times. Sure, it's shifting everything else, but I haven't showed you how to do that. But what I want you to notice is that X axis, everything is shifting. Not only that, if I come up here to pad, notice if I increase my padding, it spreads out horizontally and we still have equal spacing between all of these prices and times. Shrinking that back down. The time padding, we can bump it up closer or we can move it farther away from the x-axis. Yes, that does shift the image in the background a little bit. Hopefully that doesn't disappoint you too much. The time size, nothing too crazy there. And again, to recap, the BG height is actually going to change just the background image height. But if I come down here to the height image, that's actually making that transparent graph area smaller, but ultimately it's also affecting the math that's going on with all these dots. And there you have it. That's how we can make this X axis. In the next video, we'll focus on the Y axis where more math is gonna be needed to get the max and the min values, to get the midpoint values, to get these middle values in here, and also being able to adjust the padding in this to get that look that we want for our graph. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.